a lot of relationships begin because people ignore the red flags. And those same relationships end because of those red flags. If he's saying let's go with the flow, that's saying there is no vision, there is no plan in this situation. There is no intention with this situation, at least not what he wants to convey to you. That is a clear sign that he is likely going to waste your time. The bottom line is like, the behavior of a faithful man is not to hide his woman. Plain and simple. Now again, as I said at the very beginning, so many people see red flag, overlook red flag. See red flag, rationalize past red flag. See red flag and make all kinds of excuses for the red flag. And unfortunately, it's that process of not addressing it that causes people to end up in the wrong relationship, waste years with this individual that they never belonged with, only to end up back at square one, but with more damage, all right, and having to go through this process again, but hindered by the lack of healing they're now experiencing due to past experiences. Now, with all that said, we've got to break that cycle. We, we've got to stop this overlooking of red flags. Now, let me make something very clear. If you've been watching me, then you know I am not a believer in the minute you see a red flag, you run, you cut them off. That's not how we do things. You see a red flag and you properly, effectively address the red flag. And then if it's not corrected, now we cut them off. Now we let them go unapologetically. We move on because we did our part and we gave them the opportunity to correct the issue. All right. But again, we must address it. So I'm going to give you seven. There's a lot more than seven we could talk about. And that's why I want you to comment below. But I'm going to give you seven that came to mind uh, that I wanted to mention in this video. Uh, and again, let's just see where it goes. Let's see what else you can add to the list. So number one, and it's in no particular order, number one red flag is they never take any personal accountability. You have to pay very close attention to people. Now, this can be difficult because depending on the conversations being had, depending on the situations that arise, there may not always be a, a quick opportunity to see if this person can own when they make a mistake. But typically, somewhere in the dating process, there will be a moment where an individual, even yourself, makes a mistake or mishandles the situation, and here is their chance to now take ownership. And if you notice that they never take ownership, that is a huge red flag. But not just in the situations that occur with you and them. Also, when they talk about their past situations or things going on in their life, if every situation is framed with them being the victim and everyone else being the villain that, that came against them, that's a problem. Now, listen, I'm not saying that there aren't some situations where, yes, they were genuinely the victim, just as you may be. But in most cases, there's something that we could recognize that we could do better in that situation. And it's important that you identify if this individual is capable of doing that. Now, again, I repeat, if you notice they don't take accountability, you point it out. You discuss it with them. And you also make sure that you show a willingness to take accountability on your end because you can't be the same person blaming everyone else, never pointing the finger back at you, but then holding them to a standard of holding themselves accountable. It's not gonna work like that. You've gotta set that standard as well. But we need to make sure that both parties are willing to do this because show me a relationship where people don't take personal accountability and I will show you a toxic relationship. I will show you a miserable relationship. I will show you a relationship that will inevitably end. So you've got to make sure both people have to be willing to own mistakes, say my bad, acknowledge, okay, you know what? I could have done this better. That creates harmony in relationships that allows for things to be rectified and allows a environment where we can talk about things, fix them, and move on to better. The second red flag in dating you should never ignore is they talk very badly about their ex. Badly at all. It doesn't have to be very badly. They talk badly about their ex. This is a red flag. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, well, why? Like, you probably talk bad about your ex, so you might be a little triggered by this one. But let me explain to you why this is an issue, okay? One, 
it can go hand in hand with the per taking personal accountability because when people are talking about their past relationships and everything is about what the ex did wrong and they can never identify what they could have done better, that is a, a, a preview to what you're going to be dealing with in your own relationship with them, where they're going to always make it about you and never be willing to hold themselves accountable. That's number one. But another part to that is if they're talking badly about their ex, chances are they have not healed from that relationship. Listen, you cannot show me someone who has healed and forgiven their ex, all right? And when we talk about forgiveness, understand that forgiveness is for you as an individual. It's about releasing that negative energy, not holding on to that hurt, pain, resentment, or negative emotions. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, you end up back with a person. It doesn't mean you're saying that situation or what they did was okay, but you released it, all right? So when someone has not released through forgiveness, when they have not gotten to a better place, all right, and this is showing in how negatively they talk about their, their past partner, this is a problem because this is a sign they have not healed. And if they have not healed, then what are they now bringing into the current potential relationship? So many relationships have failed or gone left because people have brought in previous baggage to this new person. And now you're dealing with things that aren't even your fault. You're having to sift through all the nonsense because of the damage someone else did. That isn't fair to you, it isn't healthy for either of you, and it's going to kill the relationship. So once you see that someone talks very badly about their ex, again, talk about it. Maybe they need some more, well, not even maybe, they do need some more healing. They need to get to a better place, and you want to make sure they find some peace. Because here's the other problem. Again, as I said, they bring in that past baggage, but also what happens is they become so easily triggered. So now, if you do anything that, that in any way resembles a behavior, a pattern that the ex did, even if it's not the, an actual connection, but to them it looks like it, they're gonna get triggered. They're gonna be on edge. And right there, again, they're gonna hit you with things not really because of what you're currently doing, but because of what they've already been through. And they're trying to do a preemptive strike. So now, again, they don't even want to go in that direction, so they hit you before you can hit them. That's how their mind is working. So again, it's such an unhealthy dynamic. So when they're speaking badly about their ex, you wanna address that. And again, all these red flags I'm giving you, if it's you, then address it. Don't just look at this from the perspective of what the other person has to deal with. Make sure none of these things apply to you. And if they do, you need to correct it before you move forward in dating. Number three on the list of red flags in dating you should never ignore, they lie about the little things. Now, I, I chose specifically to say the little things because what I have seen in a lot of situations is this this uh, brushing off of the white lie. It's, it's not a big deal. It's a small lie here. It's a small lie there. But here's the thing. I've never met a person who consistently does white lies who doesn't give big lies, <laughs> okay? Like, this person doesn't keep it in the box of the small lie. It's not just in the box of the little what they feel is a harmless lie. It extends past that. So again, it's one thing. I think, I think everyone on the face of this earth has told a quote-unquote white lie before, all right? So I understand that it's going to happen sometimes. But when you're noticing a consistent pattern and consistently lying about things that no lie was even necessary, not saying a lie is ever truly necessary, but w when they're just choosing to lie about, well, you asked them, hey, where were you earlier, all right? And let's say they were hanging out with their friends and they could have just told you that. And they choose to lie about it. Like, little things like that, or, and, and that, that to some people might be a valid reason. Again, I'm not, I'm not making it okay. I'm just saying how people think, all right? But the point is, you understand what I'm talking about. There are these situations where it's like, why'd you lie? You didn't have to lie about that. It wasn't even a big deal to begin with. This is a warning sign. Because if they don't feel comfortable enough telling you the truth, in small moments, in insignificant situations, then imagine what they're going to do in the bigger ones. 
Imagine what they're going to do when there's a greater fear of how you will respond, when there's a greater significance to the outcome of the situation. Because again, understand that most lies are told because people are trying to dictate the outcome or they fear the outcome of telling you the truth. And so because they don't want that to happen, they tell you a lie. So again, if they're showing a struggle with the little things, they're more, more than certain going to do it in the bigger moments. So you have to address it and you have to nip it in the bud right away. You can't laugh it off. You can't brush it off. No, let's talk about it. Let's be honest. And again, let's create an, uh, an environment and a relationship where we can be honest about everything. I know that's very hard for a lot of people because so many individuals are not used to having a very transparent, honest relationship in, in any aspect of their life, but it's something that you have to establish at the very least in your romantic relationships, all right? At the very least with the person that you're trying to potentially share a life with. If you two can't be honest with each other, forget about it. It's going to be downhill from there. So you got to address those small lies when they lie about the little things. Number four on this list is they hang out with bad influences. So here's the thing. I've seen tons of situations where people are not paying attention to the circles that their potential partner is running in. All right. Now, granted, we, we want to evaluate individuals for who they are and what they show. All right. And I don't want to put their circle, their friends, their family as a full representation of them. Don't get me wrong, but you cannot ignore when your potential partner, when this person you're dating is rolling with negative influences or even in toxic family circles, because it's, it's not about even that they're going to be necessarily toxic, but that toxic energy will pour into your relationship, whether it's through them because now they have to deal with this toxic family and they bring it to you or that family coming directly to you because you're dealing with their family member. But even going back to the influences, even on that level, perfect example, if you are a woman, you're dating a man, and this man is surrounded by single friends. And again, I don't want you to simply jump to attack the single friends because not every single friend is a bad influence. But some friends, and help, forget if they're single. They can be in relationships and still be bad influences. They can be trying to push this man to engage in inappropriate behavior because that's how they roll. And you gotta pay attention to that. If that's the kind of guys he hangs around, again, address it. It doesn't mean immediately don't deal with him, but it has to be addressed. On the flip side, if you're a man and you're dating a woman, and all she has is negative, bitter women around her. You've got to understand now, that is a setup for problems because those women are more than likely gonna contaminate her mind, contaminate her spirit with negativity. When anything goes wrong, hell, even when it doesn't go wrong, everything could be going great. And they're gonna say, you sure he ain't doing something? <laughs> you, you sure he's as good as you think he is? They will immediately project their negative perceptions onto your partner because that's all they know. And misery loves company. So they're gonna try to find a way to bring down that happiness. Even if it's not a conscious decision to do it, it almost by nature occurs, all right? Because they're dwelling in that negativity. So again, as the individual who is dating the person who is either in a negative family circle or negative influences, friends, so on and so forth, you've gotta identify that. And you've got to make sure that one of the ways we address it is by creating safeguards. And one of the best safeguards to create is one great communication between you and your potential partner. Because if you guys can't talk or you guys have a gap in your communication, that leaves an opening for the negative influences to come in and contaminate the situation. But when you have two people who can talk about everything, who always sit down and address things with each other first before running to that, those friends, running to those family members, you have a stronger unit that can now withstand any of that negativity. And naturally, what will happen is that person will pull more away from those negative people if they're not going to change and be better. If they're going to keep trying to undermine the relationship, then they're going to see that there's no value in hanging out with them so much. 
But again, it's an issue that has to be addressed. It cannot be ignored because so many people have had their relationships ruined because of outside noise, outside influences. So you've got to address that red flag. Number six on this list of red flags in dating you should never ignore, how they treat other people. Now listen, I, I said it in a video before right now. I can't remember the name of the video. I apologize. But it, I mentioned that, you know, you can, see, you can tell a lot about somebody. You can see a lot about them in how they treat other individuals. It's not even about how they treat you. Don't get me wrong. How they treat you is a higher priority, of course. But we cannot ignore how they treat other people because if they treat other people poorly, then chances are that is at some point going to seep into your relationship with them. Again, most people have not mastered this, I, I can treat everyone else like crap, but treat you amazingly consistently. All right. Initially, yes, I think it's possible. You, they may be able to go through an extended period of time where they keep you in this protective bubble and do everything great for you, but they're not that great with other individuals. It's possible, but it's highly unlikely. But again, even if they can sustain it initially, it will at some point break through the bubble at some point because it's a part of their character. And it's a character flaw that has to be addressed. And so they can't hide their true character from you forever. Yes, they can bring you their best representative, but people cannot hold that up for too long. So you have to pay attention yourself to how they're treating other individuals and, and, and really understand, okay, what's going on here? Why are you like this? Why do you view this as acceptable behavior? And express your concern with it. Again, you're addressing the issue. We're not just going to cut them off because especially the fact that they're, they're willing to show you that they're going to put their best foot forward with you, then I do believe that they deserve the opportunity to correct the outside issue of how they treat others and get to the bottom root of that problem. But... If they're unwilling to correct it, if they're going to make excuses for it, whatever the case may be, then again, you cannot ignore it under the, the idea of where they treat me well. That's a problem. Because if they're really a good person at their core, then why they can't be good to other individuals? Why aren't they good to people in general? Again, we will all have our moments, but if they're consistently mistreating others, consistently disrespectful to others, or even if they treat people that they view as a lower status of, than them, they treat them in a very poor manner, that's a problem. And that needs to be corrected. So again, how they treat other people is definitely a red flag that you should not ignore and that needs to be addressed. And as I'm going with this list, if anything comes to mind, comment below. Let me know what are some red flags you think should be addressed. But this seventh one might surprise you. I don't know if anyone has talked about this, but it hit my spirit and I felt like I had to add it to the list. And number seven is they have never been alone. So hear me out because again, some of y'all might be triggered because it's you I'm talking about. You have to remember I'm a coach. I have sat down and talked to tons of people. I, I've seen thousands of scenarios. I know how this whole thing goes. And I can tell you with pure confidence that one of the issues I have found to be consistent is individuals who don't know how to be alone. Now, one, getting themselves in the wrong relationship, and I'll explain how that's a problem for you, all right? As well as not learning and healing that they can be better in their next relationship. So first, let's dissect the first part. They end up in the wrong relationship because, again, what happens is people who keep jumping from relationship to relationship and don't know how to be alone, they're trying to latch on to whatever they can, all right? And so they're not focused on, do we have a connection here? They're not focused on this really being where I belong. They're not focused on there being true alignment in this situation. They're just looking for the resume to be good enough and they will latch on to you. Now, if you're that person they're latching on to, you have to understand that it's problematic because they're not with you because they love you. They're with you because they need somebody in their life. They don't want to be by themselves. And so they will brush under the rug all the red flags themselves. And you, if you're not uh, 
moving forward with your eyes open, if you're not being aware, if you're not in tune, especially spiritually, then you are very likely to overlook it because this individual will, uh, they will, they will put their best, best foot forward in the sense of they're going to try to love you and do for you because again, they need someone in their life. But when you really take a step back and look, you start to see that at their core of who they are, the connection is not really there, but they're holding on because they don't want to be by themselves. And you got to understand that there's a deeper reason why you're even allowing them to remain in your life as long as they did. But I digress. Let's move to the next point of this. What I said was that when they keep jumping from relationship to relationship, they don't take time to learn how they can be better in their next relationship. Because again, people who don't like being alone and people who jump to the next relationship very quickly, they don't take time to heal and evaluate. All right. They're simply looking for the next warm body to have in their life. And this is a problem because they don't have any growth that occurs. So like I'll, I'll speak to clients and I'm like, hey, you need time by yourself because one, you need to detox from all these previous relationships. And you also need time to reflect and learn what you need to be doing better because you are now pro pro uh, proceeding in life blinded by your fear of being alone, blinded by your lack of healing, blinded by the fact that you don't even know who you are. Because again, you're so used to having someone there. You never took time to learn yourself. You never took time to truly love yourself. Now again, I know I'm supposed to be talking to the people dealing with this individual, but I feel like I'm talking directly right now to the person who this applies to. You got to really ask yourself, do I know how to be alone? It doesn't mean you have to be happy to be single, but you do have to learn how to be happy while you're single. You do have to learn how to not be so dependent on having someone there that you will now accept the devil into your life just to have a person in your life. That's a problem. And this happens to so many people. So again, when someone going back to Flipping it when you're looking for the dating red flag, when you're dealing with someone who has never been alone, who's always in these relationships, you want to explore that deeper. And again, I never want you to make assumptions because though this is typically going to apply to those individuals as far as the lack of healing, the lack of evaluation, them not even truly being in love at that moment, they're just latching on. You want to just, you want to be fair in, in allowing them to show you, does this apply to them specifically as well? And what have they done to counter those issues? Have they somewhere done a process of evaluation, maybe while they were even in a relationship that has shown growth? How have they progressed in life from those previous relationships to now? Are we seeing that evolution in who they are or are they still the same person? All right. Have they truly healed and released that baggage? Have they forgiven? Can they talk about their past relationships without it being all negative and hurtful? You want to address all these things. Now, if all those issues are covered and we're good, all right, cool. We won't hold that against them any kind of way. But again, if we dive deeper and we realize all of this does apply, then you got to take a step back. It's not time to be in that relationship. And let me just throw this out there real quick. And I'll do a whole nother video about this because this is a deep topic. Sometimes it's the right person, wrong time. I know some of y'all don't believe in that, but it's real. It's real. Sometimes you will meet the person who there may even be a deep connection with, but they are not ready because they have some issues they have to address. They have not healed. There could be a, a, a variety of things going on, as well as you're not as ready as you think you are. All right. And so we have to understand that, yes, again, red flags don't always mean wrong person. It may mean wrong person or it may mean wrong time. Either way, it has to be addressed and corrected before we can move forward so that we can have a healthy and successful relationship. Number one on this list is a man without purpose. Now, I don't, you're not, you probably weren't expecting that one, but let me explain. Let me first start off with a quick story, all right? I had a client one time that I was coaching. She was overseas, international client, and she was having infidelity issues with her partner. She had just had a baby several months ago, and, you know, she was trying to figure out what she should do. Um, and he, at first, it was one-on-one, -on -one, and so we talked about things, but then eventually, 
it ended up he ended up coming into the sessions, all right? And he was willing to sit down with me and be very forthcoming. So we talked about it. You know, he acknowledged that he had cheated. And we try to figure out, okay, what's the issue here? Uh, is it something lacking at home? You know, is there something you wish were different? What, what is, is it? Do you just have a strong appetite for women? And he was like, nah. And at first he couldn't like explain. He's like, I don't know. I just, I just kind of did. I kind of just fell off the wrong track. And I said, okay, no, nah, nah, something's not right here. So we dug deeper. And I noticed that he was, I'm not going to say what profession he was in, but the profession he was in, I could tell he was not really happy there. I could tell that he was doing it because it was just the thing to do, all right, to make a living, but it did not fulfill him, all right? And so to get to the point of this story, what we found was the fact that he did not have purpose in his life. And please understand, success does not equal purpose. So don't confuse men doing well for themselves as having purpose, all right? So even though he was doing okay, there was no purpose in what he was doing. So there was still a void. And what was happening was he was trying to fill that void the easiest way he could, flirting with women. Because flirting with women made him feel good, made him feel better about himself, all right? Though his initial intention was not to go out and cheat, believe it or not for some of you, because I know some of you may question that. He was not going out with the intention to cheat. He was going out to receive validation, all right? But then what happens, unfortunately, is you start getting fed that validation and, and that flirting starts to get a little deeper. Now they start, they start to push the envelope a little bit more. And then before you know it, now it's getting into a sexual thing or becomes a sexual thing, all right? So for him, and what I have noticed for a lot of men is that the lack of purpose not that it 100% it means he will cheat, nor does a man having purpose mean 100% he will never cheat. But I will say that when a man has purpose in his life, he has more to lose. And because he has more to lose, he is less willing to play with fire. He is less willing to cross certain lines, all right? It can still happen to the best of people. Because I know some of y'all think cheating is just who the person is. No, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as I go along in this video. But the point is, even the best of men who have purpose, it can happen, but it decreases the chances. And the same way, but when he does not have purpose, it increases the chances because there's typically going to be a void. And women are the easiest way to fill the void, all right, if you're capable of getting women. So... That's why this is kind of a, a red flag to, to be mindful of and to understand why it's so important for people to find fulfillment in their life, for people to eliminate these voids, whether it's through, with, through purpose as well as through healing. Because a lack of healing can also create voids, can also create that need for validation from others, which again can start off as just wanting validation and flirting and attention and turn into having sex and, and cheating and all these different things. So it's definitely something to be aware of. So a man without purpose is the type of man who is very, it, 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 he can, it, the chances of cheating gets a little bit higher, say like that, all right? Second on this list is a man who lacks discipline, all right? So when you're dating a man, when you're getting to know him, you want to pay attention to has he established any kind of discipline in his life? Now, I would argue that no one is perfect discipline-wise from top to bottom in every way, shape, or form. But what I have seen be consistent is that those who don't, who don't know how to draw a line in their life in different ways tend to cross that line in many ways, all right? So for example, if this man does not know how to have a limit to his drinking, that's a flag. If he's not disciplined in drink, it's not even the fact that he has drinks. He can have a drink. But if he has no discipline in even his drinking, all right, not only does it show, again, a, a struggle to draw a line, but also getting drunk can lead to behaving badly anyway. So that's a double negative, so to speak, all right? If, if, if hell, the way that he eats and takes care of himself, if there's no line that he draws, again, it, it shows a struggle to understand when enough is enough. 
Now, as I said earlier, and I'm going to say it again, does this automatically mean this guy would cheat? No, because he might lack so much discipline, he's too damn lazy to cheat. <laughs> like, he's like, I don't feel like getting up and doing all that or hiding texts and all this stuff. He ain't disciplined enough to cheat right, so he ain't going to cheat. And there's no such thing as cheating right. Forgive me for saying cheat right. I'm sorry. He, he is not, he doesn't have the energy to cheat efficiently, okay? Um, so he's not even going to bother with it, all right? But I do think it's something to be addressed and looked into, especially when that lack of discipline crosses the line or seeps into drinking and substance abuse and things of that nature. Uh, because that, again, that's just probably going to lead to a lot of bad behavior overall. And you've got to be uh, careful with that. And it's something that needs to be addressed and corrected beforehand. Now let's get to number three. And number three, uh, the, the third type of man who will cheat on you is a man who says all men will cheat. All right. Now I'm a huge believer in this. And there might be dudes out there pissed at me for saying it. But I don't care. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> like the minute a man says all men cheat, again, it is, it, it is an increased likelihood that he is going to one day cross that line. Because understand the mentality. If he says all men, all men include him. <laughs> like, he's, he's not saying all men but me. And who the hell thinks everybody else does it but them? No, he's saying all because he's essentially setting the stage for you to understand that this is a part of life. That this happens and so that you should learn how to accept it. And, and adjust to it rather than fight it. Because to him, it is a reality you're going to have to face. All right? There are plenty of men. Now, and, and listen, it doesn't mean, I always, I always have to give you the other side. It doesn't mean the man who says all men don't cheat won't cheat on you. Okay? I think, I think we understand that. Some men can still, you know, not say all men cheat and they're still going to do it themselves. But if he does say it, I don't know how I don't know how I could defend that statement. I don't know how I could sit here and say a man says that, but nah, he he ain't gonna cheat on you. He's not even considering it. You know what I'm saying? I think everyone is capable. I think it's possible. Right buttons push, right circumstances. But I think that when you have the mindset of all people do something, then you're essentially saying you're gonna do it too. It's the same way when people say, "Well, everyone has issues." There ain't a damn person that says everyone who has issues and they don't have issues. Like they're essentially saying to you, everyone has it, including me. And you should accept that reality and learn to deal with it rather than expect me to do anything about it. That's what that statement says. And that's the same thing that all men cheat says to you. So if he says that, yeah, <laughs> he's probably going to do it. Okay. All right, so now let's get to number four. And number four is a two-parter that I want to throw at you. But before I give it to you, Real quick, get your copy of He's Lying Sis, all right? Best-selling book. Um, it's not about bashing men. It's about breaking down scenarios that women deal with, that there are a lot of deceit or there is a lot of deceit and deception going on. And to help you how, how better navigate it. For some of you, it may be brand new information. It may be a huge eye-opener or it may be a reminder of what you already know or that push you needed, that confirmation you needed of what you already knew deep inside was going on in the situation that you've been facing. All right. So click the link in the description or in the comment section or go to www.heslyingsis.com. So now let's get to number four. And like I said, it's a two part. The number four is he does not set boundaries with other women. And more specifically, he's unwilling to set boundaries with other women. And the reason why I had to throw in the unwilling is because I'm going to give a little room to the guy who may not fully understand what proper boundaries are with female friends. And I don't mean like female friends that he may have slept with before or their exes. I do think that there are some men out there who have women that are friends who the man genuinely thinks it's friendship but does not realize this woman is hoping for a shot at some point, all right? And some of y'all women listening to this, you know what I'm talking about. That's why you don't like 
that man's female friends, because you know she's shady. You know she's waiting for an opportunity. You don't like her lingering around, and, and Lord knows what, he, what she's going to put in this man's head, right? But to his defense, I, what I, I, I'm... I'm not saying he should allow that to happen. I'm not saying that's acceptable. He needs to learn how to set the boundaries. But the fact that he has not initially may actually be ignorance. All right? Maybe, and I don't say ignorance in a disrespectful way. I just mean he does not know any better. He does not understand the, the whole dynamic, right? But if he cares about you and he's serious about you and you address it with him, I, I do believe that he'll be willing, all right? It may be a struggle, but I do believe he'll be willing. But you got again, you got to come at him the right way. You can't just be attacking him or accusing him because if you're like, oh, well, y'all doing something, he's like, no, you're crazy. You're tripping. He's going to be less receptive to what you have to say. But that's why I used or threw in there, he is unwilling to set the boundaries because now it is one thing for him to simply be unaware and not understand. It's another thing for you to express to him in a loving, calm manner your concern, and he's simply dismissing it and shooting it down. Now, again, does this mean he has an intention to go out and cheat? No. But what he may not realize, or he may realize, is that his unwillingness to do so creates an open door, all right? And if he does not watch it. And, and, I, and I do believe this. Let me say this. Because I do think that women always feel like, like men who cheat are just cheaters. That they know what they're doing. They're going after it. And I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing. But what I'm trying to get at is not every man came into the situation with the intention to cheat. Some men really don't understand how if you allow this door to open, it can lead down this path. And... It can lead to things happening in a way that you weren't planning to or expecting to. That might be hard for some of y'all to grasp, but that is a reality for some individuals, all right? And, and yes, people get caught up in the moment. So yes, in the moment, they still made a decision to go through with it. But I know some of you have been in a moment before where you got caught up in it and, and you make a bad decision. It can happen to people. But to get back to the main point, his unwillingness to set proper boundaries creates open doors, all right? It's either going to create open door or it's a reflection of he just has plans to do some stuff. Like at the end of the day, some dudes ain't trying to set boundaries with any of their female friends because they're not actually female friends. Their, 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 uh, their booty partner, uh, booty partner is such a horrible phrase to use. They, they are... <laughs> They are sex partners, they are whatever, uh, F buddies, whatever you want to call it, right? So either way, it's a bad sign. And in either way, it needs to be addressed. But remember, I said this is a two-parter. So the second part to this is he allows women to disrespect you. So it's one thing to not know how to set boundaries or to be unwilling to set boundaries, all right? And those boundaries can vary from couple to couple as far as what you determine acceptable and unacceptable behavior or where you feel like the line should be drawn. And that's something that a couple has to discuss because it's not going to be the same for everybody. But now when we get to disrespect and, and he allows these women to disrespect you as his woman, that's a horrible sign. All right. And again, does it always mean it's an automatic he's cheating? No, but that's a hell of a door to have open. That, that's, and, 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 and allowing other women to disrespect your girl, that, that only brings into question how much do you value your partner? How much do you respect your partner? And if you don't respect her enough or value her enough to defend her and to protect her from attacks from other women, then what, what is to lead me or anyone to believe that you wouldn't cheat? You know what I'm saying? Like that, that to me just kind of is going to lead into that at some point because there's no regard uh, for respect of your partner and, and cheating, you know, at some point can boil down, boil down to that. So I think when, when he's doing that and, and some of y'all may say, well, what woman is going to allow that? Listen, there's a lot of relationships right now where women are dealing with men. And I hate to use the word accepting, but allowing uh, or continuing to deal with this man despite the disrespect that he she receives from him and from other women in his life. All right, uh, and, and 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 let me say this because I when I said other women in his life, something kind of hit me. 
Because there's disrespect from other quote-unquote female friends, acquaintances, whatever. But there's also disrespect from female family members. Now, the disrespect from female family members may be less of an indicator of cheating being on the horizon, but it's still a huge problem. And it still brings up the question of, well, how much do you really respect and value your partner if you allow any other woman, family and friends included, to disrespect her? That's a huge, huge problem. So it's definitely a red flag, definitely needs to be addressed, and if not corrected, cheating or not, he needs to be let go. Like, if he's doing all that, done, done. That's it, all right? If he can't fix it, done. No point in continuing. So now we are at number five, and I predict there are going to be some men who hate me for this one, <laughs> all right? Number five on this list is a man who thinks it's okay to be sliding in the DMs, all right? Now, let me, let me give a little background here. Um, again, let me reiterate. These actions do not automatically mean the man will cheat. But they do present a problem. They do present an open door. And a lot of men, especially if he's a man, like if he's a man who lacks discipline and he's sliding in DMs, then what's to believe he will be disciplined enough to not go any further than the DMs? But even if he goes no further than the DMs, I think it's fair to say sliding in the DMs is, is uh, unhealthy, inappropriate behavior, all right? Uh, unless you're sliding in for business, all right? I just have to throw it out there. Unless it's for business, that's different. But if it's not legitimate business, we got a problem here. But let, let's start here. Some of y'all may say, well, it's a problem if he even likes a woman's pictures. And that is your choice if that is an issue for you. And that's something that you have to discuss with your partner. The only reason why I'm not going to mention liking a woman's pictures as a type of man who would cheat on you is because, and maybe my perception is a little skewed, I feel like, depending on the woman, she may never even see that like. Like, the like is a very informal thing today. Unless she has such low amount of followers that she can actually even keep up, there's a very good chance she's not catching it, okay? And a like doesn't necessarily lead to anything. I, 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 it, most of the time, simply liking a woman... Now, if he's repeatedly liking all of her pictures, then we can say the liking of the pictures a little bit more moving in that direction. But a like of a picture here or there... I, I don't feel comfortable saying that's really a sign because I, I know plenty of men who will like a picture and that's, they're not going any further than that. But again, that is your choice to determine that's still inappropriate behavior. Now let's go to the next level. Leaving a comment on the post. A little bit worse than the like. <laughs> but, but again, I question how far can the comment go unless it's a blatantly sexual, flirting, trying to get at you comment. All right? then that's different. But again, a standard, uh, let's just say it's a praise emoji, the two hands type of thing, right? Uh, in a sea of comments, I don't see that materializing into anything. Maybe I'm being naive, so let me just throw that out there. But I just don't see that turn anything. So likes, comments, eh, you can still deem it inappropriate, but I'm not going to put that in, oh, well, that's, that's like leading to cheating behavior. But once we get to DMs, <laughs> right? once we slide in the DMs, that's a direct shot. That's a head-on hit. Like, yo, I'm here. I see you. See me. What's up? All right? Like, that's what's going on here. So to me, again, now, is it possible for a man to do all that and still not take it further? It's possible. Yes, there, there are some men who like to flirt and it may be validation and, and, and I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying you should accept it. I'm just explaining that, that that is a possible thing, right? But again, the problem is it that is an open door because if he flirts and slides in the DMs, even if he says, yo, it's harmless, I ain't trying to really get at her. I'm not trying to make anything happen. But what happens if she responds and says, hey, I think you look good. <laughs> like, I'm interested. Will he be disciplined enough to be like, oh, nah, I was just trying to, just trying to flourish, you know, just trying to say hello. It's no, no big deal. Like, this is where it gets really, really risky. So, DM behavior, messaging uh, uh, in the inbox, whatever, um, 
that that to me is is dangerous behavior. All right, and definitely something that needs to at least be addressed. Now, I'm just gonna throw it out there: if you are a woman who's like, oh, it ain't a big deal to me, because it's possible there's some women who don't care. That's on you. I'm just throwing out things that are maybe typical behaviors that may be signs. It's not a 100%, but yeah, DM sliding, that, that, that's probably a problem. Now we get to number six. And remember, number seven is a big one. So please hold on for number seven, all right? But number six type of man who will cheat on you is a man who hides you, all right? And in reality, if he's hiding you, He's probably already cheating on you. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. Forgive me because some of y'all may be dealing with that situation and I don't want to make it a laughing matter. But unfortunately, yes, uh, the hiding of you typically may indicate that he already had somebody else, that you are the side chick. So whether you call it you're being cheated on or cheated with, uh, cheating is already occurring in a, in a scenario. And if it's not already occurring, because maybe in some situations, uh, this is just a reality. Some men are not proud of who they're sleeping with. Um, so they will hide that woman. They will not show that woman to the world. They will only meet in secret places and things like that. That's, that's still a man that is not going to close off his other options. You know what I'm saying? If he's with you and he's hiding you, then he either doesn't want other women to find out about you more than likely... Or he, he, even if he's ashamed, that means he still wants something better. Um, there, there's a lot of variables going on here, but the bottom line is like the behavior of a faithful man is not to hide his woman. Plain and simple. And so the, the only caveat to that, and when I say caveat, let me break it down further. I do think there's a difference between hiding in general and hiding on social media. Now, I am not here to say that it's, it's up to you whether you're okay to keep your relationship off of social media and to keep it private, all right? I think that's the best way to do it, to be quite honest with you. I think that's the safest way to take it. I do understand the concern that when someone engages in that, what else are they hiding? What, why are they hiding? So on and so forth. And I would then, I would argue with you or I would counter that by saying, evaluate his overall behavior. Typically, the man who hides you on social media and is doing dirt, and again, I use the word typically because there's always exceptions to the rule. Typically, this man is showing other unhealthy behaviors. He's not giving you what you need. There's maybe neglect in other areas. It isn't just he's perfect in every way, but he only doesn't show you on social media. That's not typically the case of the man who is trying to do dirt, trying to be shady, trying to creep in these streets, all right? So I would then say to you, the guy who is loving you, pouring into you, he doesn't hide you to in, in his world when you're out about, family knows about all these things, but maybe he doesn't post you all over and maybe he doesn't ask you to post him all over. It is, it is a possibility that he is just one of those people that wants to keep it private, doesn't want people all up in your business. So have that discussion. Don't just assume that that's the issue. But again, evaluate the overall behavior, evaluate the overall treatment as to what's going on here. I do understand that, yes, you could have some guys who treat you great, hide you on social media, and that's because they are doing stuff. But I don't think we should just be jumping to that conclusion. It needs a, a more in-depth exploration of the scenario, of the dynamic overall to determine what's really going on here and what is his motivation behind hiding you online. But in general, if he's hiding you, then yeah, that's a really, really bad sign. And now the big one. All right? I told you to wait for number seven. I need you to hear this. I, I, I want you before you hear number seven to take a deep breath, get to a really calm place. All right. Fight the urge to be triggered because it's my trigger. All right. But just, just follow me. If you were willing to listen to the first six, I need you to be willing to listen to number seven. All right. So the seventh type of man who will cheat on you is a man who is being sexually and emotionally neglected. Now listen, I know that people like to make it all about the cheater. And I'm in no way saying that cheating is okay. And I know some of you will say, well, if he's being neglected or if, it's, if he has to cheat, why won't he just leave? 
Now, let's be honest here. Let's flip this for a second, all right? And I know this won't apply to all of you, but if some of you are going to be honest with me, think about this. You as a woman, you're with a man. Let's say you've been with him for five years now. Let's say you guys have kids, you have bank accounts together, you have an established life together, all right? And in year five, whether it started in year five or year five was the point that you, it started to wear down on you the most, you have been emotionally neglected by this man. And even sexually in the sense of actual satisfaction. Like he may want to have sex, but it ain't never good for you, okay? So the sex ain't good. He's emotionally neglecting you. You bring this to his attention many times. He does nothing to correct it. It's always an excuse. It's you crazy. It's you tripping. It's this. It's that. It doesn't get fixed. Now, people could say, if you ain't happy, just leave. But we know in that scenario, it ain't that simple. I'm not saying that ideally, if you're going to feel the need to cheat because you're being neglected here, and then you're coming across men who are trying to pour into you in the ways that you are not being fed at home, there is naturally a temptation to grab hold of that. And that temptation to grab hold of that can lead to, even if it was not the intention, it can lead to sexual relations, all right? And some people would argue it doesn't even have to get to sex for it to be cheating. But the point is, though it may be the right thing to do to leave before you cheat, I think if we're being honest, we understand it's not that simple, all right? Now, I say that, again, not to validate cheating. I say that to bring it back to the point of we've got to take a more serious approach or, or consideration of neglect in a relationship. So I made that example about you. But now let's flip it back to the man. You can't neglect the man, and let's start with sexually. But we're going to talk about emotionally because that's a big deal. You can't neglect the man sexually. And, and though I know many of you listening uh, you know, may believe in sex till marriage. So whether you're putting this in the, in the box of marriage or if you guys are already sexually active in a relationship before marriage, whatever. You can't, once you cross that line and you're being sexually engaging with each other, now pull that away, neglect him, and think everything's going to be okay. All right? Now, I understand some situations... Uh, medical situations, things like that happen. And I would argue that those scenarios, I've seen many of men be willing to be patient and understanding through things that are out of the woman's control. So it's one thing for it to be out of your control neglect. It's another thing for it to be blatant. You're just dismissing. It's the same way of the other example, the man dismissing the woman's feelings and you're dismissing his needs. You can't keep doing that. So, uh, 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 an analogy I like to give, all right, is that imagine you're a woman and you have a child and you tell that child you can eat nowhere else but in this house. You will get fed in this house. If I catch you eating somewhere else, we're going to have a problem, all right? Day one, the child comes home. I'm hungry. Oh, I'm tired. You know what? I'll feed you tomorrow, all right? Day two, I've been so busy. You know what? I'll get to you tomorrow. Day three, day four. We are now on day seven. The child has not eaten. Child's walking home. Some person comes up to a child. Dear child, you look malnourished. Here's a sandwich. Eat something, please. Now, the child knows, damn, I should not take this food. Because my mama or, or this lady said to me, the woman who takes care of me said, don't eat outside this house. But damn, I'm starving. Maybe a bite won't hurt. Maybe I'm just going to eat the whole damn sandwich, all right? Either way, now the child comes home and you say, how dare you? How dare you eat outside this house? But you starve them for seven days. Now, I'm just using seven days. I don't, however many days is too long in, in your relationship for going without sex, that's between y'all. What I'm saying to you is, again, we can't neglect our partner, men or women, even though we're talking about women neglecting men right now, it, it goes both ways. We cannot neglect our partner and think that's okay and think we can make excuses for that and that should be accepted, but if they do something wrong, now it's all on them. That's not right. 
And we have to understand, we have to address these issues at the root. Now, yes, let me just say this real quick. I know some of you will say you could do all of this and they still cheat on you. Great. Yes, that's very possible. And sometimes you're just with the wrong person and there's no way around it. What I'm explaining with neglect, don't use that to validate neglect. It, it, it's one thing if you are doing your part and they still, okay, now we know they ain't worth it. Leave them. All right. Or we, we, we don't need to be in this relationship. But when we know we've been neglecting them, we need to acknowledge that. We, we, we need to have some personal accountability in that area. Now, I mentioned sexually, but I have to mention emotionally. I'll, I'll never forget one time a man said to me, because I, I had this plan to write a book all about cheating, breaking it down from every angle. And the man said to me, make sure when you write this book that you tell women a lot of the cheating does not start from sexual desire. It does not start from the man seeking out sex. It starts with an emotional void, all right? Being at home with a woman who doesn't believe in him, doesn't support him, doesn't pour into him in that way. And what happens in a lot of scenarios is that void is now being filled by some other, another woman comes along who now pours into that man in that way. And let me tell you, I, there are some women out there who can just, they know when that man's not getting what he needs. And if she's, she's hunting for a man, oh, she gonna, she gonna work her magic. All right. So now she's telling, oh, you so amazing. If you were my man, you know what I would do for you? All this stuff. And it's drawing him in and drawing him in and drawing him in. And again, because a lot of men don't understand how to shut the closed doors before you get too deep in, how, how to catch yourself before it crosses a line, some men end up now finding themselves all caught up. And now that, that emotional fulfillment turns into sexual desire or turns into sexual willingness with that woman. Which is why in some scenarios, y'all will notice where the man cheats on a woman and she don't, she don't even compare to the main woman, his wife or whoever. But it's because she was pouring into him in the ways that he felt the void. Now again, I have to repeat, this is not to validate cheating. This is not to say it's okay. But I'm trying to break it down in a way that we can actually start to take a more effective approach because I do, if I'm being honest, I do believe this, this perception of when they cheat, we just ignore the idea of, of neglect being involved here is sabotaging relationships. It, it's destroying relationships because you can't just put it all on them and not hold ourselves accountable for what we're supposed to bring to the table. All right. So all that to say, yes, I think that there are a lot of people who cheated, who thought and said out of their mouth, I would never cheat on somebody and genuinely believe that. All right. But as I said earlier, circumstances, the buttons being pushed, the right type of vulnerability at the right moment can lead to very bad decisions. All right. And unhealthy behavior and open the door to cheating. And so though there are men out there who live that lifestyle, who they believe that's what they do. And they, they probably will line up with a lot of the other things I mentioned earlier in this video. There are some situations where that was not his core character. That's not what he believes in, but there's a position he found himself in and he's, the line he found himself crossing. Doesn't make it okay. Needs to be corrected. Um, needs to be addressed. But we, we have to take neglect very seriously and understand that how that plays a role in our relationships going in the wrong direction. Let's get right into it. Number one sign he's wasting your time. He tells you, let's go with the flow. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos or you've read my book, He's Lying Sis, then you know, or even the man God has for you, you know I'm big on this whole going with the flow issue. The reality is this, if he's saying let's go with the flow, that's saying there is no vision, there is no plan in this situation. There is no intention with this situation, at least not what he wants to convey to you. That is a clear sign that he is likely going to waste your time because he doesn't want to be held to any specific outcome. He doesn't want to be held to the standard of getting to know each other for the purpose of a serious relationship. The way to get around that without having to say it directly is, let's go with the flow. And the reality is that if you allow that man to be vague with you, then 
it allows him to continue to move in this very vague manner and essentially not get what you truly desire in that in that situation. So you've got to make sure that you get a little bit more clarity on what is he trying to do here? What is his intention? Of course, we don't know if we're going to get married tomorrow. We don't know if we're right for each other. But we at least know if we're trying to get to know each other for the purpose of seeing if we can move forward. Or if we're just here to, quote unquote, have fun or, you know, whatever he's aiming for. So again, be very careful of let's go with the flow. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I've said let's go with the flow. All right, cool. Now ask yourself, where was your head when you were trying to go with the flow with a guy? Were you really into him? Were you really intentional about trying to build a relationship with this man? Or were you trying to have companionship in your life without any of the expectations that come along with defining what your intention is? Be real with yourself because the reality is that you probably were just looking for companionship and trying not to define the situation. Well, guess what? That's probably what he's doing too. So again, no more go with the flow. Number two sign, he's wasting your time. Actually, before I give you the number two sign, let me let you know today's video was brought to you by Audible. Audible is where you can get audiobooks. You can listen to amazing books like He's Lying, Sis, and so many more to be educated, entertained, enlightened. And it's so easy because I know when I listen to audiobooks, when I'm traveling or when I want to lay down in my bed, sometimes I don't feel like reading. Listening is a lot easier and sometimes I retain that information a lot better. So for a lot of you, that might be a much more effective way to get through the books while you're driving, while you're cleaning around the house, whatever you're doing around the house. Listening to the audiobook allows you more time or more flexibility to take in the information. So they got a special offer right now, the Audible Plus membership, only $4.95 for the first six months, and you can stream thousands of books, thousands of books, all right, and more. So check it out. Go to audible.com forward slash Stefan Speaks or text Stefan Speaks to 500 dash 500. I put the, uh, the link in the description and in the comment section. Take, check it out and get He's Lying Sis. But here's a great thing. You'll be able to listen to He's Lying Sis and all of my other books too. So take advantage of this. Now, back to number two. He's always telling you how busy he is. Now listen, don't get me wrong. As a busy man myself, I am not trying to say that a man simply saying he's busy is a sign that he's wasting your time or he's lying or anything like that. However, when he's always emphasizing it, when he's always putting it in your face, he's pretty much essentially saying, do not hold me to the standard of having to put forth a certain kind of effort. Do not give, put any expectations on me. Understand that I'm not going to be able to call you or talk to you as much as you would like. And again, to some extent, there's truth, but, but the key here is the overemphasis of it because now that becomes his scapegoat, all right? And the reality is that chances are he's not that serious about you. The man who is, even if he's busy, he's trying to work with you. It doesn't mean he can simply take away all the things that he has on his plate and make all the time in the world for you. There has to be a, a, a compromise or a balance there, but he will make an effort. But the guy who always wants to drill in your head, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Listen, he's more than likely going to or is wasting your time. Now, again, I want you to know with the first two I mentioned and the next five I'm going to give you, there's always exceptions to the rule. And that's why it's always important for you to not just take these signs and run with it, but to take it, address it, and let, let's see if he's willing to correct it or shed the kind of light that says, okay, this is acceptable in this specific situation. So always address the issue, but in most cases, he's wasting your time, bottom line. Now the number three sign he's wasting your time is he's always consistently canceling on you, all right? When a man is serious about a woman, he's very, very interested. He is excited about the opportunity to get to know you, to build with you, to, to see if we can move to something greater together. So to always cancel on you, to always come up with other plans or excuses or whatever, 
is typically a sign of a guy who's just not really serious. And again, is wasting your time. So you, you got to be mindful of that. Again, things do happen. And there are going to be some cancellations that are legitimate. But that's why the key word is consistently canceled. It's one thing for it to happen one time or even the first date. I've seen plenty of scenarios where the first date got canceled for legitimate reasons. But when it's the first, the second, the third, I've had clients come to me saying, I've been talking to this guy for four or five months and he's canceled every date. Every time we're supposed to meet up. Hell, I even had one client who he canceled every time they're supposed to FaceTime. That was a huge red flag. But the bottom line is the consistent, constant cancellation of dates or opportunities to hang out and see each other is a sign he is wasting your time. So do not entertain that. The number four sign this man is wasting your time is he wants to keep all his options open. Now listen, let me be very clear in explaining this. When two people are single, they have the, uh, the right to do whatever they want. Whether people agree with that or not, the bottom line is until you are in a committed relationship, individuals are free to date more than one person, all right? But when I say he wants to keep his options open is when he's saying to you, not only am I, it's almost like I'm not trying to commit to getting to know you in a serious manner because I still want to be out there. So it isn't a matter of, okay, I date multiple people and I'm trying to get to know different individuals. And some of you may argue that if he is trying to date multiple people at the same time, how serious is he? But I think in fairness, I've seen plenty of situations where initially guy meets woman, he was already dating different, going on dates here and there. He didn't just automatically shut everything down. He, he needed to see what was happening here. That's understandable. But when he's very intentional about the, you know, I, I, I don't want to commit to anything exclusive here. I don't want to. And again, I, I'm, and essentially it's the guy who says, I don't want that relationship. I'm not sure if I want to go in that direction. So it's keeping the options open in the sense of I'm not really trying to be in one relationship. All right. He's just trying to enjoy himself at the moment. Kind of goes hand in hand with go with the flow. So that might sound a little weird the way I explained it. I hope you get where I'm coming from. But essentially, when he's not really trying to commit to the potential of a relationship, a committed relationship, all right, that is a sign he's wasting your time. You should not get caught up in thinking, I can change this man's mind or he'll come around later. Men know initially if they at least see potential here. So if he's already projecting, he is not looking for something more, all right, because he wants to be able to enjoy multiple people, that is a problem. The fifth sign he's wasting your time is when his words and his actions do not line up. Now, I always say an inconsistent action is a consistent answer. And the answer is he ain't serious. He's not serious about you. He, he, he's telling a lie somewhere because when, when words and actions do not line up together, a lie is being told somewhere. Now, this can go both ways. In the book, He's Lying Sis, which again, I hope you listen to on audible.com, there's a chapter where I talk about he acts like your boyfriend but doesn't want a girlfriend. And so that kind of guy is showing you the actions of him being into you, him wanting something more, but his words are saying to you, I don't want a relationship, you're not my girlfriend, so on and so forth. So don't just think for a second when I say his words and actions don't line up, it's a situation where he, uh, he says he wants something, but he acts different. No, it can go the other way too. Either way, it's a problem. Either way, there's a lie. Either way, you're gonna get caught up in the game that he's playing, all right, because no one who is genuine about their intentions is saying one thing and acting different or acting one way and saying something different. It should all be the same. It should all come together. So when you pick up on that, again, address it, address it, make sure we're not jumping to any conclusions. But if his words and actions are not consistently aligned with each other, that is a problem. That is a sign he is wasting your time. Number six, another sign he's wasting your time. He doesn't want to take you on dates. 
Listen, I can't tell you how many situations, how many women have come to me dealing with men who only want to come over, Netflix and chill, who, who have every excuse about going out and taking you somewhere, and it's all about the convenience, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, that, that's, that's more in their favor. All right, they want to make it easy and simple. And the reality is that, again, he is probably just aiming for having a quote-unquote good time. He's just looking maybe for sexual relations, maybe just some companionship to a certain degree. But the likelihood of him being serious and trying to, to go to a higher level with you is likely not there. Now, again, are there men out there who aren't big on always going out on dates? They like staying home? Absolutely. But when you are presenting or expressing a desire to go on a date and all this man does is deflect and all this man does is bring up about coming to your house or you coming to his, nah, he's not serious. Again, the guy who's serious about you is going to want to work with you in that way, is going to want to take you out to make you feel good, to show you that he's serious and very interested in you. If he's not willing to make that kind of effort, that is a huge red flag. So when he's never taking you out on dates, that man is wasting your time. And then number seven, the last sign he's wasting your time is when everything is at his convenience. Again, relationships are about reciprocity. They're a give and take, all right? They're about two people pouring into each other. When one individual makes it all about them or what is convenient to them, that person is not looking for a serious, healthy relationship. They're looking to use you to get what they want. They're looking to enjoy you the way that is convenient to them and doesn't require as much effort out of them. All right. You've got to be mindful of that when you start noticing that there is no compromise, that there is no flexibility, there's always about his way or no way. That's a problem. All right. He has to make you not just a convenience. There has to be a priority to getting to know each other. There has to be a priority to are we building a relationship together? If that priority is not there, then what are we doing? He's wasting your time and you're wasting your time dealing with him. Stop setting yourself up for failure. Recognize the issue. Again, as always, address the issue. And if it is not corrected, it's time to walk away. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Avoid people who get mad at you for wanting the same things they ask for. I just read that quote online. I paraphrase it a little bit, but we're talking about narcissists. All right. Now, listen, 